Hello audience, as you can see it is 9.36 a.m. on the morning of Friday, September 27th, 2013 and I just woke up so please excuse my voice. I just noticed that um, down here there are updates available um, and it's expected about 211 kilobytes worth. I uh, had just logged into my computer and I'm using Linux Mint 15, the latest version of Linux Mint which is based on Ubuntu uh, Linux, which then Ubuntu Linux is based on Debian uh, GNU Linux, and uh, Linux Mint is really good. Well, anyway, I noticed that uh, there are updates available. Okay, now unlike Microsoft Windows, of which whenever you log into Windows, there um, there might be at least three or four programs that are all screaming for updates. Uh, Windows itself will will nag at you for updates, you know, with a pop-up window or, or a little pop-up balloon. Uh, Adobe PDF Reader will scream at you to be updated. Uh, your antivirus will scream at you to be updated. Your security suite software will scream at you to be updated. Uh, let's see, along with Java, um, Oracle Java will scream at you to be updated. Adobe uh, Adobe Flash Player will scream at you to be updated. And these are programs that people typically run um, on their computer. And then there are other programs that someone might have, um, you know. But but okay. So there's Adobe PDF. Then there's Adobe uh, Flash. Then there's um, you know, uh, Oracle's uh, Java, that's three right there. Then there's your antivirus, then there's your security suite, so that's that's five right there. Then there's Windows, that's six. Um, and and then there, there could be other programs that might scream at you to be updated, and that's really annoying. And, you know, a lot of people really don't like Microsoft Windows, but yet they use it anyway, and they're afraid to try something else. They think, you know, that one of the common excuses is that they don't have time to uh, uh, to learn how to use another operating system such as GNU Linux. Um, well, they're going to have to allocate time to learn how to play, uh, how, how to use, um, how to completely relearn how to use their, their, their entire computer because... Um, well, because of Windows 8. I know people are dreading the upgrade and that sort of thing, and uh, but they're going to have to eventually um, because Windows 8 will be the oldest operating system that is supported and that you can buy and that you could use uh, in, in the near future. Okay, and, um, and that's, just, that's just how it is. And so you're going to have to learn how to use that Metro interface. And it aggravated me at first. I wanted to pull my hair out. That was back in May of 2012 when I was using the consumer preview of Windows 8. But, you know, you get a little bit used to it and that sort of thing. But um, for those people that don't like that kind of change, maybe they should go with Linux. Because you look at your menu. Here's your accessories. It's all predictable here. Administrative, uh, you know, change to the system. Here's your games. You got a category for games, regardless of what company or what group or organization made the game. You got your graphics editing software here to do with graphics and pictures. You got your internet stuff here, whether it be your web browser or um, or whether it be your email or BitTorrent or um, IRC or Skype or anything like that, Instant Messenger. You got your office, you know, and this is basically like Microsoft Word right there. Uh, LibreOffice, also known as OpenOffice, is basically like Microsoft Office. Uh, here's your preferences right in here. Here's your sound and video. You got video editors in here. You got audio editors and all that. Now, many of these I had installed, but it was super, super easy. Audacity is a good program. System tools, this should be pretty obvious. And <clears throat> also, you notice really nice transparencies in the back, uh, and you see the background. Okay. Anyway, okay, about updates. Now, this little icon down here in the bottom right hand corner, usually it's green and it has a check mark in Linux Mint. Um, and that means everything's okay. 
Okay, well, whenever your system detects that there are updates available to any program in your computer, um, whether it's a program you installed or a program that came pre-installed, um, even if it's a component to the GNU Linux operating system or if it's some application you installed, it could be a game, it could be a text editor, it could be anything. And if your operating system detects that there are um, updates available, and see this is an update manager, uh, a, you know, a dedicated component that, that checks your system for software that needs to be updated. And when there are updates available, this little icon down here will turn colors. It will turn from having a green check mark on that gray colored shield to having a uh, circle, a blue circle with a white colored eye in the middle of it. And that's all uh, GNU Linux does to let you know there are updates. Nothing screams at you. You just, you just glance and notice to see if this little icon changed color or changed appearance. And then it did, so you type in your super user password. And here is the update process. Now you notice that I have some games installed here. This is Blood to the Chosen. Um, uh, Blood to the Chosen. It it is 15 years old now, and then here's uh, and it plays really good uh, even with high settings and even with this uh, this six core processor, uh, 3.8 gigahertz processor. Even when it's clocked, it really you can get by with 1.4 gigahertz. 1.9 is is very adequate if you're going to do any multitasking. Just clock it at 2.5 and that's all the, the speed you would need plus you're not using a bunch of electricity and putting out a bunch of heat uh, for blood too. Now Grand Theft Auto San Andreas the PC version, you know the Windows PC version yeah it runs fine in here also I got Steam it runs good, Half-Life 2 demo runs good in there so yeah gaming has come to Linux and uh, this stuff was easy to set up you just um, you uh, you just use this right here, play on Linux for a lot of things. That's why I used for uh, San Andreas and Blood, uh, or Blood 2. Anyway, uh, yeah, the last major obstacle to uh, Linux ad uh, adoption uh, in the uh, computing uh, world uh, ha has been um, really, the last obstacle has been breached, um, which was gaming. Now gaming is coming, or has already, well, there have already been games for Linux for, for a decade. Uh, this one here has been a long time. Um, many of these, uh, you know, games have been around for years. Uh, Frozen Bubble's been around since before 2005 and all that. It's a good game. Anyway, game emulators are in here also. But now here's the update manager, and it, it indicates that we have, um, um, you know, four updates here. And I had to put in my super user password just to authenticate, you know, uh, because I'm going to make changes to the system. You can hit refresh again just to make sure you get the most updated uh, package list. I mean, it already updated it whenever you go to authenticate, whenever you put in your password. It already gets an updated list, but just to make sure, see, there we are. And, and you literally do this. Click Install Updates, and, and then just wait for it. And it manages, it, it manages to update everything that needs updated at the time. <clears throat> you know, it constantly checks to see if there's any new versions of your software. And the reason why it's good to get updates is because of security fixes, bug fixes, um, uh, performance improvements uh, or new features or whatever and, and look see this little icon it says your system is up to date and this is exactly how it will look most of the time but in the event that that icon turns to uh, having a, a blue uh, circle in the middle of it with the with a white colored letter, letter I that means you have updates available now if there's something wrong like if it can't retrieve updates or whatever, um, or something's wrong, then it will. This little gray or uh, white colored shield 
well, you know, somewhat gray colored shield, will have a uh, red X in the middle. And that very seldom happens. Most of the time it will have a green shield, uh, well, a green check mark on the shield, and then um, other times it will have like the blue circle in the middle. And that's how you know that your system needs to be updated, is that it will have a, a blue colored circle in there. And this is in Linux Mint that it does this. And, you know, nothing nags you, nothing bothers you. It's not like Windows, you know, where you have a whole bunch of, you know, uh, uh, dialogue balloons or, or, or uh, message notification or whatever, you know, notifications that, that all scream at you to be updated, where one pops up a couple seconds later, another one pops up, then they all pop up almost at the same time, or one quickly after another. That, that's how it's done in Microsoft Windows. And um, I don't know about Mac OS. Um, you know, I haven't used very many Apple computers recently. Um, of course, um, Apple makes uh, Mac OS X, and that is Unix. That is, uh, that is Apple's flavor or variety of uh, BSD Unix. And it is so extremely easy to use to the point where a Mac user typically knows less about the computer than the typical Windows user. And that's because so much stuff, so much system information is is really hidden from them so they can just focus on using their application and all that. You know, Mac users don't know what defragging is. They don't even know what a web browser is. They, 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 they don't hardly know anything at all. They know, like, generally less than the average Windows user. And yet Mac OS X is Unix, which Unix is the basis for GNU Linux and you know all this kind of stuff. So Mac OS X and GNU Linux have more in common than what GNU Linux, you know, or Linux and Windows has. And it in Mac OS X proves the point that, that a Unix like operating system could be so excessively easy to use to the point that you you literally have to know nothing about a computer you know especially compared to a Windows user so I'm tired of all these complaints and nagging and whining and belly aching that Windows is easy to use and that Linux is hard to use okay alright I'm gonna end this video now and I just want to make this quick tutorial about how to update your system in um, well one last thing if you're going to use the command line way, oh, don't you just love these transparencies? I love them. Here's an easy way in um, in the command line, in what they call the terminal. All right. Type in uh, sudo for super user temporary super user privileges. Um, apt get and apt get is the name of your package manager or whatever apt actually, and then you want to get and then update and then. Um, Put in your password when it prompts you, like it just did. <clears throat> Here we go. There we go, it's done. Type in exit to, yeah. I mean, that's another way to update it. Now, if you're using a Fedora or something that's kind of Red Hat based, you type in, because keep in mind, what I'm using here is based on Debian. But in like, uh, Fedora or something like I guess Red Hat Enterprise Linux or maybe even CentOS you would type in um, and then hit enter you would type in sudo yum update and then hit enter I think that's why it's been a, it's been a couple months since I used it uh, since I used Fedora that's the way you do it in there but anyway, now I'm finished with this video and, you know, just how to update um, your operating system and, soft and software in uh, GNU Linux.